This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 594, 10 Worst Excuses for Not Saving for Retirement, by Mike Ballou of freedompathblog.com. And I'm Dan, your host and narrator. This is where I read to you from some of the best personal finance blogs on the planet. And I have another new author for you today. Mike is the author of Freedom Path Blog. He's an engineer turned blogger who simply wants to help others navigate their personal finances and plan for retirement. So let's get right to his post and start optimizing your life. 10 Worst Excuses for Not Saving for Retirement by Mike Ballou of freedompathblog.com. A recent survey found that one in three Americans have nothing saved for retirement. Perhaps you are one of them. People have all kinds of excuses. Can you guess what the number one reason is? We count down the 10 worst excuses for not saving for retirement. Number 10, I'll live on social security. As mentioned in my article, When to Start Taking Social Security, social security was never meant to be the sole source of income for retirees. The average monthly social security check is only $1,250. Can you live on that? Social security retirement benefits are designed to supplement retirement savings, not replace them. I challenge you to sit down with a pencil and paper and try to make it work. See what your life looks like living on $1,250 a month. I assure you it won't be pretty. I'll be old when I retire, so I probably won't do anything. Really? Tell that to a 65-year-old. People are living longer and doing more than ever before. Stop screwing your future self and get busy saving for retirement. Number nine, something came up. This is one of the many excuses for not saving for retirement. The car needed new tires. We had a big medical expense. The roof leaked. In my article, there are no unexpected expenses, only unprepared people. I explain the importance of planning for non-monthly expenses. If you fail to maintain a proper emergency fund, you are setting yourself up for unpleasant financial challenges. Number eight, my parents are rich. Who needs to save for retirement when your parents are rich? They are going to leave you a big inheritance and you'll be set for life. What could go wrong? Plenty. For one thing, how can you be sure your parents will leave you an inheritance? The headlines are full of examples of wealthy people who leave their heirs little or nothing. There are a variety of reasons, such as wanting their children to succeed on their own, or a concern that a big infusion of cash might worsen substance abuse issues. You and your parents could have a huge disagreement that results in them cutting you out of their will. Or perhaps one of them will have a lengthy illness that results in them burning through the cash to pay nursing home costs. Number seven, I'm paying for my kid's college. Sacrificing your needs in order to provide for your child is very noble. However, in the realm of retirement planning, the predominant thinking is that you must put yourself first. There are other ways that your child can pay for college, but you're the only one who's going to save for your retirement. If you want to guarantee that you'll be dependent on one of your children someday, keep putting their college first. When you retire and quickly burn through your meager savings, it won't be long before you'll be knocking on Junior's door asking if you can move in. The right way to fund your child's college education is to start saving for it the day they're born. If it's already too late for that, then let them pay their own way through college. It's been done before. Children have a greater appreciation for their college education when they have some skin in the game. Number six, I won't live that long. Regardless of how you have lived your life, it's more likely than not that you will live long enough to reach retirement age. Think about Keith Richards and the life he's lived. If he can make it to retirement age, so can you. Number five, I won't be able to get to my money if I need it. While it's true that making early withdrawals from your retirement savings will result in a penalty, there is a penalty-free way to get to your money. Most employer-sponsored plans, such as a 401k or TSP account, permit you to borrow against your retirement savings. The money you borrow must be paid back with interest, but you pay the interest back to yourself. How cool is that? I believe it was Shakespeare who said, neither a borrower nor a lender be. In this case, you get to be both. Number four, I have too much debt. If you have a lot of debt, you probably don't have anything left at the end of the month to save for retirement. It comes down to priorities. In my article, Three Keys to Getting Out of Debt, I lay out a surefire plan to get and stay out of debt. First of all, you have to stop making purchases on credit. Just stop it. You are not going to die if you don't have the latest iPhone or add to your already too large shoe collection or drive the coolest car. You have to pay off all your debt and rearrange your priorities. 
you can fund your retirement savings if you get your priorities in order. It's a lengthy process that can take years, so you need to get started immediately. Make some changes in your life if you want to have any chance of ever accumulating any appreciable retirement savings. Number three, my work doesn't have a retirement plan. If your place of employment does not offer an employer-sponsored retirement plan, you can start your own. It's called an IRA. IRA is an acronym for Individual Retirement Account. As the name implies, it's your own account for retirement savings. You are in charge. You decide how much to put into it and what happens to your money. You can invest in stocks and bonds or leave it in cash. It's up to you. Number two, I have plenty of time. Albert Einstein famously said, compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. The great thing about saving and investing for retirement is the number of years your funds have to grow. You are actually earning interest on interest. The longer you wait to begin saving for retirement, the less time you have for compound interest to work its magic. Also, by not saving for retirement, you are reinforcing bad habits. You are buying more things than you can afford, so there's no money to save for retirement. Saving for retirement is a lifelong mission, and it's never too early to start. Number one, don't make enough money. Which brings us to number one in our countdown of the 10 worst excuses for not saving for retirement, I don't make enough money. If this is your issue, it comes down to taking a hard look at how you're living your life. If you feel that you don't earn enough money to save for retirement, then you need to make some changes. You need to earn more money and spend less. It's as simple as that. Simple doesn't always mean easy. You may have to change jobs or get a second job or both. You may need to downsize your lifestyle, such as moving into a smaller home and driving a cheaper car and going on fewer vacations. Whatever the solution is, you need to implement the necessary changes to achieve your goal of saving for retirement. Conclusion. So there you have it, the 10 worst excuses for not saving for retirement. If you're using one or more of these excuses, I urge you to stop making excuses and get busy saving for retirement. You just listened to the post titled 10 Worst Excuses for Not Saving for Retirement by Mike Ballou of freedompathblog.com. And thanks to Mike for his permission to narrate his content and you can show him some support by visiting his site, which I have linked in this episode's description. And I'm going to keep this ending nice and short for you today, but before we go, it would be great if you could come by oldpodcast.com slash support and check out some of the different ways that you can support our show. Most of them are totally free, like sharing the podcast with a friend, writing a rating and review, and more. We'd really appreciate it. Again, the link is oldpodcast.com slash support. But that's going to do it for today. Thanks, as always, for listening, and I will see you tomorrow in the Friday show, where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this podcast, but also Optimal Living Daily, the show where I read to you from even more blogs covering finance, productivity, minimalism, personal development, and more from incredible bloggers like Derek Sivers, Zen Habits, Mark and Angel, The Minimalists, and all the ones you hear on this show too. So if you enjoyed today's episode and like taking amazing blogs on the go, come on over to Optimal Living Daily and subscribe to that one too. And together, we'll start optimizing your life. You've been listening to Optimal Finance Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits.